Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome back to the Ice and Sphere program. Today we are going to conquer the universe, or at least start conquering the universe. And we're also going to fix all our power issues forever. And we're going to get ready for the true end game. And I'll show you exactly how to transition to that. In the meanwhile, I would also like to thank Nick Efferson, Wally UK, Steve Bonds, an old gamer gaming, Kiro Ivanovsky, and Shifu for becoming members of this channel. You guys are awesome and your support is very much appreciated. In order to get all the uh, stuff we need in order to expand efficiently, we are going to need to expand throughout the entire universe. However, this is one of the major things that will be different if you're playing with the higher combat difficulty setting or with combat at all. You will find the enemy expanding to the other systems in your galaxy as well. So if you're playing without any combat, you could just fan out ac across the entire universe, get infinite amounts of materials really easily, and that's that not as easy if you're playing on a higher difficulty and because i've been playing relatively slow because i'm doing a lot of recording and stuff like that in the background uh i will actually find a lot of the enemy in a lot of the system so this is one of the advantages if you play a little bit faster than i am um, however it's not a problem uh, you'll just need to uh kind of adjust to that and i'll show you how as well you know those annoying moments when you find yourself on a different planet and you suddenly find out you forgot, I don't know, power poles or solar panels or belts? Well, that's infinitely worse when that happens when you're in a different star system. So, uh, in order to make sure that never happens again, or at least we have an easy way of solving that, we are going to need a way to easily access whatever we're producing here on our mall planet, in this huge mall that we have now set up over here, um, on any corner of our galaxy and i'm going to use one of my favorite builds definitely favorite builds but also one of the builds that i've already shown a few times before and i'm going to use a polar mole and this is it and before you start typing in the comments that oh my god tda why didn't you show us the actual build well that's because it's actually super simple although it's a little bit of effort to set it up the first time around uh, once you've done that, it's actually super convenient to have this blueprint in your collection. So let me first show you the basics. We have a circle of ILSs with one in the middle, just because that fits. And the whole point of this is that every single ILS contains a, uh, a different set of buildings. It's going to set, be set to remote supply. So that means that it can um, send this to anywhere in the universe. Now, in order to do that, we're actually going to need the warpers. But the warpers are going to be brought in as well. So one of these things, and it's always interesting to find out which one it is. Uh, but one of these things is also requesting warpers. Let me let me see if I can find it. As you can see, we have pretty much every building in the game in this thing. Oh, there we go. So I'm actually requesting warpers here as well. And then I am exporting warpers on the belt below. And because all of these ILSs are connected, the warpers will actually go from one building into the next and automatically resupply each other because I have a whole circle going on here. So the warpers are going to be on the belt in the circle here. Now you actually can see that there's no warpers yet on the belt and that is because I haven't actually unlocked the upgrade that we're going to need in order to unlock the logistics vessels warp. So we need level four logistic carrier engine in order to actually allow our vessels to fly between systems. And that will also be the point where um, these bells will actually start moving because as you can see right now there is no warpers in the inventory over here if i check my own inventory there's a little bit of space there for the warpers the ILSs have a similar thing as soon as you have that unlocked now in order to make sure all the buildings actually get to these ILSs we have the usual setup of these uh, logistics distributors but this these ones are set to request the item so this does mean that this, this build will actually drain your mole from all the buildings that are already in there because they, these will all be delivered to these ILSs. Um, but it's actually really easy that way because you can simply go to the planet view by pressing M and then you can just click on it and pick whatever you need f directly from the ILS and put it in your inventory if that's what you want to do or just place it back in. Uh, it will mean that the automatic delivery to Icarus while you're on this planet will not be as efficient as it used to be. Uh, but I think that's a small pain to suffer if you take into account that you can now request that from anywhere in the universe. There's actually a couple of things in here that we haven't built yet. Um, let me see if I can find them. Uh, for example, we have the um, launching silos as well. 
this entire build is actually already set up. It actually includes things like artificial stars already. This is really set up for the end game. So you build these things once and that's it. Uh, everything we're going to be building after this will be requested. If there's any building in the game that I left out, because there's a, a few missing, I don't even remember which ones. It's only like two or three, but those are like corner cases that I never used. So I decided not to put those in. I think, for example, that includes... I don't actually... Oh yeah, it includes things like the Jammer Tower. I think the Plasma Turret might not be included either. Uh, I'm not entirely sure yet, to be honest. Yeah, I, I only included the turrets I always use. Uh, but if you do use them, you can just kick one of the other buildings out. There's bound to be a couple of things in here that you're not using yourself. Um, just adjust this as you see fit. There are a few new additions to this build because I actually included a shield generator on this side as well as in the opposite side over here. Just to make sure this thing never gets taken out because of course if this thing gets taken out when you're on a different side of the galaxy, that's going to be a huge mess. Um, honestly, that's probably the point where you want to reload. So, But um, the shield generator should make sure these things keep uh, are kept safe. And I also have a couple of signal towers in here just for the sake of making sure there's a little bit of extra defense. And of course the solar panels are just here to fill up the space. Now you could probably fit in a couple more of these. I didn't want to overdo it. And actually let me know, do you prefer these like end game builds to be on foundations, like actual visible foundations? Or do you prefer the more natural look like I'm going for right here? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you're going to be expanding to different planets, you are probably going to want to bring a couple of these uh, advanced mining machines if you can already build them. These are relatively expensive to make. We already made the frame materials in the previous episode. We made all the other inputs as well. The only thing you're going to need in order to make these that we might not have yet are the grading crystals. Now, as you can see, I actually already have some of these because they came out of the farm that I had over here for the dark fog. Now. Um, it's actually a rare drop from the Dark Fog as well. So I'm able to build like um, a, a couple of dozen of these things. But that's one of the items that you are not necessarily going to need when you're expanding. But it just makes it a lot more convenient. So I included this little blueprint over here. And if you have the grading materials or as soon as you find it somewhere else, you can build as many of these. And you will never have to bother with these normal mining machines ever again. Case in point, I just moved to my first system over here and look, there's three hives already in here and by the looks of all this traffic over here, there's a lot of bases on these planets already. Now, I did happen to find one planet over here that wasn't actually uh, taken at all. So I figured why not just keep it safe and use my planetary blueprint with the defense hub on top of the planet in order to make sure there's at least never going to be anyone landing here just to make sure I can grab all this silicon because I of course have an, almost no silicon in my starting system anymore. Uh, there's actually some coal over here as well as a lot, of, a lot of other base materials, nothing really of interest on this particular planet. Um, but you don't need to overdo it when you're first expanding. Just grab a few planets and then you're going to want to look for some specific types of resources. Now, I'm not going to lie, like I just pointed out, you're probably going to have to fight for some of these resources. But if you're uh, in a little bit of luck, there's only going to be a couple of bases on some of the planets that you need. I would actually recommend just going through a couple of the different systems and trying to find out which planets are easiest to go to. Don't complicate your life by trying to take hugely defended planets first, unless there are super valuable resources on there. Uh, for example, this planet in particular, I have oil, I have organic crystal and I have stalagmite crystal which actually covers almost all the rare resources that you're going to need. The oil you want to grab because you don't have that much oil on your starting planet. The organic crystal is going to save you a lot of headaches in terms of the more advanced builds. The stalagmite crystal is also super important because this turns into nanotubes straight away. So that makes that super convenient as well. And then on top of these resources, what you want to look for is kimberlite. It's actually not super necessary because that makes diamonds and you can make diamonds from coal as well very easily. Um, but I'm just going to assume that you find kimberlite somewhere because it's pretty common. And then last but not least, you want to also find fire ice. So fire ice was actually already in our starting system. You can also sometimes find it on gas giants. Uh, it doesn't matter where you find it, just make sure you grab some of that as well. So again, organic crystal, stalagmite crystal, kimberlite fire eyes and then whatever other resource including oil that you can find now there's one more thing that if you can find it is super convenient as well and that is the acid the yellow 
asset that you need for a lot of the uh, other components like titanium alloy. Uh, this is actually something you can find in lakes on some of the uh, other planets in different systems. If you can find one of those, uh, you're never going to have to produce asset manually ever again. Now don't worry, we'll get to the builds uh, pretty quickly, but I do want to make sure I leave you with all the tips and tricks I can give you in order to efficiently expand throughout the universe. Because honestly, uh, again, this is one of those moments where some people burn out in the game. If you have to mine every single resource on a planet, that's actually a lot of work. So I actually don't recommend that you do that. Just grab whatever you need. However, in order to keep in mind where you've already been and which planets you still need to basically explore further, I like marking them. So I put a little C on the name of the planet in order to indicate that I've started uh, mining this planet, but it's still under construction, hence the C, but you can use whatever you want if it makes sense to you. This means that I still have more resource on this, resources on this planet that I can mine. I just didn't get around to doing all of them just yet. And don't forget, now we've set up our interstellar mall, we can actually just request whatever we want. And the nice thing about these hubs that I included in the uh, blueprints earlier is that you have a couple of empty spaces here. So in this case, I ran out of solar panels. So now I'm just requesting solar panels from my mall and they will get express delivered to this thing. And I don't have to fly up and down between systems. Now, don't forget that if you do this, make sure you actually clear the settings before you leave the planet. Otherwise, there will be tons of resources stuck in here that is not actually going to be used by anything, anyone. You're probably not going to come back here and remember that these are even in here. So make sure you do that before you leave. Now, here you see the advanced miners in action. You can just put them on a note. I wouldn't worry too much about covering every single note because some of these notes are so spread out, you can't actually cover them entirely with one advanced mining machine. Some people really like to include some of the smaller mining machines to catch the things that are sticking out. In this case, I think I actually caught them all. Oh no, look, there's one missing. So what you can actually do is place a manual mining machine on that. Make sure, of course, that it is powered and then put a belt straight back in to this thing like so. And that will actually make sure that this is all uh, being harvested as well. This is a lot of work, so again, I wouldn't worry about it, but it is a way to do this. And this advanced mining machine can actually be turned off in terms of collecting speed. Now, this costs a ton of energy, so I don't recommend doing it at this point, but it's important you know that you can. Um, so it's a, a way to easily mine tons of resources. Make sure you have a ILS setup somewhere that is actually requesting these resources. So for example, I have one over here that is actually locally demanding the copper that I've mined in the advanced mining machine that you just saw. And that's being flown in by the drones so it can then be exported by the vessels. You're probably going to be struggling for power on some of these planets that you're mining. And you could fix that by placing down a lot of solar panels or anything like that. But I actually recommend just mining the things that you really need or just setting up the logistics in order to be mining. But don't worry about the power just yet because there's a lot easier way to solve this than by building like hundreds of solar panels that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. But we're going to need a few builds in order to do that. So let's get to it. So the first build I'm going to show you is extremely simple. It's just an ILS requesting the fire eyes and stalagmite crystals. Putting them on a belt and then a double line of uh, chemical labs on each side is going to produce either the nanotubes or the graphene, depending on what's on the input belt. And then it's just being exported across this very long belt all the way into this ILS over here. And you can see I'm bringing in a ton of this stuff, so you're never going to be low on this ever again. Uh, as a byproduct, we actually get a little bit of hydrogen as well, which is going to come in use because we're going to need a lot of those later on as well. I actually decided to add in a couple more things to this. So first of all, I also started to request Kimberlite and I just added a very long row of smelters in order to make a lot of diamonds. And again, just look at the speed at which these things are coming in. You're not going to be needing any more than maybe one or maybe in the end later two of these builds in order to satisfy all your requests in terms of all of this stuff. Now, as you can see, I actually have a little bit of a proliferation belt going on here as well. I figured why not, because soon we are actually going to be proliferating stuff. Um, and th because these are rare resources, they will eventually run out depending on how fast you play and how fast you get into very late endgame. So you might as well make sure you get the most bang for your buck. The next build I'm going to show you is again super simple and you're only going to be needing to build one of these for a very long time. 
And as I build that, I'm just going to request all that crude oil that you're now collecting from anywhere in the universe and transforming that into raw oil. Sorry, refined oil, I should say, as well as hydrogen. Now I'm not going to show you these very simple builds in detail because honestly there's not much to show. But of course there are blueprints included in the description of this episode. So you can download these if you want to use them for yourself. Of course I don't know at what difficulty you are playing. So you could get into a situation like I did over here. Where I could find all the rare resources I just mentioned. But I couldn't actually find a planet nearby that had acid lakes on it. I did find one of two of them, but they had like 18 bases on them defended by the dog fog and I didn't want to spend a couple of hours plowing through them. Well, maybe not a couple of hours, but at least I didn't want to spend the time plowing through them. But I can also just build a very simple build like this, get the asset going that way and then upgrade my offensive capabilities and then get back to that later and then just plow through them very easily. Whichever way you use in order to get access to those resources, uh, as soon as you do get access to them, you can now start really cleaning up your build. So this is the uh, quantum chip built from last time. Uh, as you can see, Mark II assemblers and things like that. We can now extremely clean this up. Step one, we can take out the entire right half of that build because everything related to the organic crystal and graphene, we no longer need. We can just add, uh, request the organic crystal and graphene, one from our rare build and the other one just from the miners on the planet where this is actually... Uh, on the planet itself and we can just bring it in so that means that the entire section related to oil here is now gone and we have we are left with pretty a nice and tiny section that is just going to be producing the quantum chips now we are also going to be upgrading to mark 3 assemblers which are actually a lot faster than the mark 2 versions 50 percent faster to be exact so we can cut down this even further Removing one assembler for every three we have, that means that we can cut down all of these rows of six into rows of four. Um, you can see this actually starts to be a lot more compact and small now. All we need to do now is clean up the belts. And then it looks like this, as you can see, a lot smaller and compacter than what we started out with. Now, as you can see, I am doing this remodeling in a sandbox mode, so you can do the same thing. Just make a new game, put it to sandbox mode when you save it. Uh, find yourself a planet or just pave the planet with the uh, button you have over here that lays foundations across the entire planet. Unlock all the science and it allows you to easily fiddle around with your builds without having to do it real time while being attacked with the dark fog. Now you have that blueprint, you could actually completely remove this entire section from the old build and just update the old build to the new version. It's completely up to you whether or not you want to do that, but it will save you a lot of building space on the second planet in our system. However, that was not the reason I wanted to update that build because as I just mentioned, we are using Mark III assemblers now, but we are not actually building them yet. So let's expand a little bit further. I took out the entire farm for the dog fog. It was on the left side of our base. So we have some building space and let's get going. Now, the first thing we are going to need in our mall is actually access to broadband because in order to make these assemblers uh where are they over here we're actually going to need some of that broadband as well i decided to be lazy and just use the old build for the particle broadband as well but we're actually going to be updating that later on so if you do want to use a more refined build then make sure you watch the entire episode because i will be showing the updated version of this build as well However, the main thing you need to remember is that by default, the mall cannot access anything from an ILS. So I just have an outgoing build over here that goes into this box with a logistics distributor on top of it to make sure the mall buildings can actually reach the broadband as well. Then up next, you can just place down the blueprint I just showed you. That's the updated version of the quantum processors that is again going to be needed for the production of the assemblers. As you can see, you will get some of these white... Uh, ghosts that you can't actually build but what you can do is you can temporarily um, downgrade these facilities to the lower version and if you keep pressing shift while you hover over all this stuff and you only select the facilities you're not going to be good downgrading your belts or your sorters just build this first with the mark 2 assemblers and then as soon as you get your first 20 or so um, assemblers mark 3 just Again, upgrade them just in the reverse way that I just showed you. So again, you just go to this and you once again hover over all of these and they will be upgraded instantly. Don't forget to add in a little box for this one as well. And then we should have all the resources we need in order to start producing the Mark III assemblers. Now make sure you grab some of these or make sure you grab them from the ILS that they're being exported to and start upgrading your facility. 
shouldn't take you more than a few minutes to upgrade all of these assemblers and as you can see it's now humming along quite nicely. Next on the list is proliferation because this is going to be super valuable in order to scale up our science research. So Mark 1 proliferators are made from coal. Extremely simple to make um, and actually super fast to make as well. Then the Mark 2 version is going to be made from the Mark 1 along with diamonds which we now have an infinite supply thanks to the Kimberlite. And then the Mark 3 version is going to made, be made from the Mark 2 version along with the nanotubes which again we have an infinite supply thanks to the stalagmite processing facility that we now have up and running. So now all you need to do is put down a row of Mark 3 assemblers of whichever length you want and then add in two more rows for the other colors of proliferators and of course make sure that you uh, import the earlier version into the building directly from the first version and make sure that you are requesting the other required materials in order to put that on a belt and as you can see it's a super simple belt so we have the coal in the back we have the diamond going through the middle here and then the nanotubes down here and then the other buildings are directly connected and we have the output of proliferators going here however we're not quite done yet because there's one very important trick to show you and that is this, you want to actually proliferate your proliferators. And yeah, that's a mouthful, I know, but it's actually super efficient because what this allows you to do is get proliferated proliferators, which uh, are going to allow you to not only spray 60 times per proliferator, but 75 times. So by spraying a proliferator once, so you use up one charge, you actually get 15 charges back. So that is super efficient and that's just 14 free charges just there. Um, other than that, uh, you don't necessarily need to go around proliferating every single step in your production chain. It is actually cost efficient in terms of the raw resources that you need, as well as the energy that you will start saving, especially in the longer production chains. But it's also a lot of work. I've done it in my proliferation run. So if you are interested to see a similar type of run where I actually proliferate every step along the way, you can check that one out. But if you just want to be efficient, uh, in terms of your time and effort spent on proliferator, just proliferate your proliferators and then focus on the most important outputs. Now, by far the most important places you should be proliferating are the in and outputs of your science production. So you can see over here, I'm actually proliferating the output of the purple science as well as the inputs. So that means that I'm not only producing 25% more output on terms of cubes i'm also going to be having cubes that are proliferated that again will produce 25 percent additional science uh, once they reach the processing facility so that in all in all is actually going to give us about 50 percent more science production simply by proliferating now all of this extra production that i just showed you in all these the relatively simple build is actually going to request a huge amount of power as you can see i'm always getting almost getting to the point of requesting a thousand megawatts um, and I'm only producing 700 well 700 is quite a lot already but that's obviously not going to cut it in the long run so we need a more efficient way to generate power than all these solar panels and turbines that more efficient way is the turin fuel rods these are actually super efficient if you carry them around with you as well uh, they will power you for a very long time but that's actually a very good way to power your base as well because you can put them in these um, mini fusion power plants and as you can see each one of these will actually generate 15 megawatts of power so just a handful of these will actually already produce about 100 megawatts which is a lot more than you can say for these solar panels so that's actually going to take a bit of work as well and in order to be efficient, we're going to be starting out with a build we already have because we have the build for the super magnetic rings over here. And if we check out the recipe for the fuel rods, they actually need super magnetic rings, alloy, as well as deuterium. Now, deuterium, we're going to have plenty. Um, and this build is going to supply us with the super magnetic rings. However, this is an old school build, so we're going to need to upgrade this. At this stage of the game, I really recommend that you don't try to reinvent the wheel over and over again because, well, we have a pretty serviceable wheel built for the Super Magnetic Ring, so I might as well use it. As you can see, all you need to do is delete one of the assemblers uh, in each row because I set it up in that way. And I actually reorganized this bit a little bit so it looks a little bit less messy. So I have the smelters now on this side over here and I have the assembling machines over here. Now, we're going to be adding in a couple of new things because, of course, we also need the titanium alloy. 
And in order to get that alloy, we're going to need some additional iron. And look, look how nicely those three smelts that we need in order to make that will fit in here nice and easy. We're going to need a few more smelters though, because we need some titanium, we need some steel, and we need some titanium alloy. So the iron is going to go over here. Then the steel is going to go back on this belt over here. The titanium is going to be delivered here. And then in order to make this alloy, we also need the acid, of course, which is now going to be delivered straight from the ILS. And then uh, last but not least, we're going to be adding in a total of eight assemblers Mark III make deuterium fuel rods. This is actually going to be producing fuel rods enough for a huge amount of power production. And it's very easy to replicate this build. So that's why I intentionally keep it relatively small. You could scale this up as well. Um, but this is, this is very practical and nice and square. And well, we're going to be adding some ILSs to this to finish this off. Now I've added in another proliferating belt here as well because proliferating these fuel rods will actually make sure they give a lot more energy. So that makes it a lot more efficient at a small price of just a small spray. Um, and if you carry them with you yourself again, that will hugely improve the amount of energy you're going to be able to draw from that. Um, there's different ways to proliferate by the way. So I just proliferated it here on the incoming belt that goes into the ILS. But an alternative way of doing this is actually just have a belt go out your ILS, flip back on in itself, and then by doing so, get the unproliferated stuff out and get the proliferated stuff back in. And you will slowly see the amount of stacks um, ticking up over here. So you used to see it flipping from one to two. And as is, this continues to basically filter out the unproliferated stuff, this will turn up higher and higher. So just don't worry about having something proliferated at a specific location. You can do it pretty much anywhere you want in the universe. It will remember which things are proliferated and which not, even if you're transporting them to the other side of the galaxy. So do it wherever you want and that's most convenient in your builds. Now, of course, producing all of these fuel rods, it's not going to do us any good if we don't have the actual fusion plants to put them in. And this is, of course, where this tiny little build for the mole comes in in order to produce the fusion plants. Now, you will notice probably at this point that we're, uh, we have quite a few buildings that actually require these super magnetic rings. But we also have a lot of buildings that require a hefty amount of the titanium alloy. So I decided to upgrade the production of that as well. Now, at this point, you really want to start reusing your earlier builds as smartly as possible. So remember the build that we just made for the deuterium fuel rods? Well, we are already making the uh, magnetic rings in here. So all we need to do is, again, take out the elements that are actually related to the titanium alloy. And there we go. We have a build that's completely up and running and completely modernized to where we are in the game right now in order to make these magnetic rings. Now, of course, again, make sure you add in a little box to distribute those things. But other than that, this should work just fine. Now, you could argue that you only need to take out the uh, deuterium and then just produce a little bit of titanium along the way. And that is perfectly a valid way to go. But I'm actually going to make a different build for the titanium alloy because we need quite a bit more. And the nice thing about the build for the titanium alloy is thanks to all the new stuff that we actually have unlocked, we can make a very neat looking, very simple build to do exactly that. So we're going to start out with a total of eight smelters in the start with a, a little opening in between. And then we have three rows of 12 smelters next to that. The first eight smelters are going to be dedicated to making titanium. And then the remaining three lines of smelters are going to be dedicated to one resource each. So we need iron to make steel and we need steel to make titanium alloy then all you need to do is add in another belt for the acid and then you have both the titanium as well as the steel as well as the acid and you can produce quite a bit of titanium alloy just here and then last but not least i added in a little distributor here in the middle it looks very cute and it's very organized and having that actually in the build itself rather than just sticking out somewhere on the side and this is going to make sure this actually reaches our mall now if you ever want to further expand your production of titanium alloy. You don't actually have to build this on this planet. You could just build the same build on a different planet as long as you make sure it has access to warpers. And then what you can do is just set this to remote demand. It will bring that alloy back here and then put that uh, alloy in this box over here so it can be distributed to your mole. It's a lot easier to expand your production on other planets and then just add whatever building you want to produce more of, just add that to the mix over here. Uh, rather than just duplicated everything on a different planet. 
And with the fusion plants now in production, you can make a very simple build like this, which actually will help you power both your existing planets as well as any planets you want to expand to. In my experience, one of these builds with 24 of these fusion plants will give you approximately, of course, 360 megawatts of power, which is actually more or less the number that you need for an average mining planet. Uh, Sometimes you need two of these, that's fine as well. If you are making another production planet with, with hefty production, maybe you need three or four of these. Uh, just make sure that you don't overdo it because of course you do need to actually make the deuterium fuel rods for these. So uh, you actually need to make sure you have enough production of that. If you don't, then everything will grind to a halt. So keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to just spam these all over the place. Uh, but deuterium fuel rods are fairly easy to make so you shouldn't run into too, too much issues so basically now we've solved the power issue for the rest of the game because you can put this down on any planet and the warpers will make sure the fuel actually gets to this build then another thing i want to mention that might be obvious but i do want to make sure you are aware of this is that you can now upgrade your offensive platform once again it's still the same layout with the, with the missile uh, launchers and the turrets around with it. i'm still using the same inputs in terms of the ammunition however i now switch to the turin fuel rods if you look at the amount of power this is going to generate it's actually a huge amount of power so if you want you can actually do things like adding in um Let's say a planetary defense tower. It should be fitting in here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you can also add a signal tower to that. This will have no issue powering all of this. And if you just duplicate this a couple of times on a planet you're trying to conquer, you should be able to conquer that really, really, really fast. So you could actually set the upper air already to something like balanced or low. So it actually uh, starts attacking all the relay stations on the planet as soon as you put it down. And that just makes clearing out uh, hostile planets a lot easier than if you would do this before you have access to all of this. So at this point, feel free to start clearing out the dark fog for wherever they get in your way. With the Mark III assemblers unlocked as well as pretty much infinite power, you might be wondering, should I start redesigning my entire setup that I already have and that we've built over the last four or five, six, seven episodes? The short answer is... No. Well, of course, you can redesign everything if you want to, but the reason I'm standing next to my blue science production, remember from the first few episodes, the blue science and the red science production, as you can see, it is still working. The reason we set it up like we've done is so this keeps being relevant even into the end game. Of course, we're going to be producing more blue science elsewhere later on, but the blue science production that we already set up is still plugging along, is still working, and the same holds for every single other build that we've made. Even this build over here that's using, that's build, making the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 belts uh, and sorters is still being used because elsewhere in our mall we're using those inputs to build the Mark 3 versions, for example, and all the other things like the simple steel and iron and copper smelters that we have over here do feed into our uh, mall over here so nothing is going to waste everything is still completely relevant so if you want to redesign it by all means go and do that but if you don't need it you will have no redundant facilities whatsoever there is one facility that's not really doing much right now and that is the science facility we are of course still processing science but we're not actually producing science in these facilities over here other than a little bit of green and a little bit of purple science um, but that is of course the going to be the focus of the next episode in which we are going to use that upgraded platform that i just showed you to take care of a lot of different planets and get a lot more resources so we can really sc start scaling up our science production and we're also going to need that in order to start working on our dyson sphere because this is after all dyson sphere program so if you're still here you're awesome and i do hope to catch you in the next one because it's going to be a lot of fun